Today I'll be reading Weedle on the Needle. Stomper, stomper, bomper, boo. Tell me, tell me, tell me do. Magic mirror, did all my friends today have fun at play? Today I see Adriano, Mason, Chloe, Barrow, Gabriel, Vincent, Colton, and Claire. Weedle on the Needle, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Many years ago, before anybody lived in the Northwest, there lived a very happy creature called a Weedle. He was big, fat, and had a very large red nose. All day long, he would play tag with the other animals of the forest or just sit around sniffing flowers. One day, while the Weedle was playing, he happened to look down the bay and saw a whole ship full of men arrive. They immediately set about building and clearing the ground. As they worked, they whistled. The more they worked, the more they whistled. And all that whistling noise hurt the poor Weedle's ears, for he was very sensitive to whistling noises. It was so bad that the Weedle could get absolutely no sleep at all. Day by day, he became grouchier and grouchier to the point of grumbling to all of his friends in the forest. Finally, the Weedle decided he must put a stop to all the whistling. He thought for a moment and then realized that if all those men didn't have their tools, they wouldn't be happy and therefore wouldn't whistle. So that night, he carefully stole all the tools. By the next morning, the men quickly made new tools and started whistling all over again. <sighs> he grumbled. What am I ever going to do to make those people quit making that whistling noise so I can get some sleep? He decided that maybe the best thing to do was to scare them. Because when people are scared, they can't pucker. And when they can't pucker, they can't whistle. He began creeping up behind them and growling at the top of his voice. And sure enough, those men were so scared that they couldn't whistle. But one time, he growled at a very brave lumberjack. And that lumberjack, to prove he wasn't scared, just whistled at the Weedle. Well... Let me tell you, that just about scared the poor Weedle to death. He jumped back, put his hands over his ears, and ran into the forest. It was then that the Weedle knew he could no longer live near the bay, so he packed his belongings and moved away. He wandered far and wide, searching for some place that was far enough away from the men so he wouldn't have to listen to all that whistling and could get some sleep. He wandered further and further into the forest until he came to the very top of the mountain. He listened very carefully, and as he couldn't hear even the faintest of whistles, he unpacked his sleeping bag, his toothbrush with the squiggly on the end, and his white woolly pajamas. He quickly brushed his teeth, dressed in his pajamas, hopped in his sleeping bag, and fell fast asleep. He slept so hard that his big red nose went on and off just like a blinking light. But that didn't bother the Weedle, and he slept and he slept. In fact, he slept for many, many years undisturbed high on the mountaintop. One day, years and years later, the Weedle began to toss and turn in his sleep. Suddenly, he woke with a start. What was that? He grumbled and rubbed the sleep from his eyes. He yawned once, stretched twice, and then peeked over the edge of the mountain to see what was going on. There, much to his surprise, he saw that the men had continued to build over the years and now had built almost to the edge of the mountain. But what was more alarming was the fact that everybody was whistling. Oh no, cried the Weedle. What am I going to ever do now? With all that noise, I'll never get back to sleep, he grumbled. The Weedle began pacing up and down the mountain, grumbling and mumbling all the while. Then his eyes lit up and a smile crossed his lips. I have it, he growled. And with that, he dug around in his possessions until he found the biggest sack he owned. Then he went to the very edge of the mountain and by standing on his tiptoes, he reached carefully into the sky and grabbed a cloud. Very gently, he started stuffing clouds in the bag until he had the, into the bag until he had it was full until it was full as he could get it. 
With the bag thrown over his shoulder, he set out for the source of his noisy problem, Seattle. When he finally arrived, he looked for the tallest building in order to complete his plan. He picked, out of all the buildings, the Space Needle. He carefully climbed to the top and gently laid down a bag of clouds. He looked all around and grumbled. This wouldn't be such a bad, bad place to live if it weren't for all these whistlers. For you see, all around the Space Needle, children were playing and the older people were working and they were all whistling. The Weedle reached into his bag, pulled out the biggest and wettest cloud and threw it high in the sky. The cloud hung there for a moment, then began to rain on all the people below. Now people in Seattle like the rain and rainy days are fun, but it's very hard to whistle on rainy days because your lips get so wet. Ho ho, shouted the Weedle. Now I have some peace and quiet. With the rain falling all around him, the Weedle stretched out on top of the Space Needle and once again fell fast asleep. Soon, everybody in Seattle knew that the Weedle was responsible for all the rain. And finally, in desperation, the mayor went to the top of the Space Needle to see if he could get the Weedle to stop the rain, if only for a day, so that the people could whistle again. Very gently, he shook the Weedle by the shoulder. Mr. Weedle, he said, please wake up. The Weedle rumbled and grumbled and finally woke up. What is it? He growled. Please, said the mayor. Could you stop making it rain? The people are becoming sadder and sadder because they can't whistle while they work. The Weedle then told the mayor his sad story. I never meant to hurt or make anyone sad, he said, but I just can't sleep with all that whistling going on. The mayor thought for a moment. I know what we shall do, Mr. Weedle. I'll be back tomorrow morning with the answer to all of your problems. With that, he went back to town and set his plan in motion. The mayor quickly called all the sail makers in Seattle and had them bring all the cotton they could find to the Seattle center. Then, when they all arrived, they began sewing all the cotton together. They sewed pink cotton onto yellow cotton and blue cotton onto red cotton. And by early morning, they had finished the task. Then, all the people of Seattle, with the mayor at the lead, marched the Space Needle and the Sleeping Weedle. They all stood around as the mayor once again woke the slumbering monster. Huh? What is it? The Weedle mumbled as he woke. <clears throat> said the mayor as he cleared his throat. Mr. Weedle, as you can't sleep with all the whistling and all the people of Seattle are sad that they can't whistle, we hereby present you with these earmuffs so that you may sleep in peace. With that, he gave the Weedle the biggest, most colorful pair of earmuffs you have ever seen. The Weedle placed them over his ears and smiled for the first time in years. The people were so happy they began whistling with joy, but the Weedle didn't mind now because he couldn't hear it. He slowly folded the bag of clouds and with the bag as a, and with the bag as a pillow fell fast asleep. And he slept so soundly that once again, his, no, his no, nose began to blink. There's a Weedle on the needle. I know just what you're thinking. But if you look up late at night, you'll see his red nose blinking. <laughs>